afternoon from Indian Wells. I know a lot of you aren't gonna make it to this live, so I'm just gonna do a short little class because I wanted to make sure that I got you guys some information to update what you're studying because this stuff is not only on your final in your class, but it's also on your California State exam. So I'm in my hotel room in Indian Wells and at one o'clock I have to be in legislative meeting and that's where we're talking about what's going on with our laws and our rules in California and how we're going to help homeowners and land owners and people who want to buy houses because it's crazy out there. Anyway, the lighting's not very good in here. I thought it would be better. But anyway, I know a lot of you aren't gonna be able to join me, but I did wanna shoot you out some information and not give up on you know going forward with the principal's class. So here we go. Today we're talking about trust fund and trust fund accounting. And in California and on your state exam and on your final, they have a lot of stuff about trust funds, but unfortunately, but true, we don't use a lot of trust funds in the real world of real estate, but on the test we do. And on the test, good morning. Or afternoon how are you I'm glad you were able to join me I'm sorry about the fact that I had to throw it in there at the last second I just happened to get to my hotel room and see that I had a half hour and I wanted to give you guys some information because you have to learn all this stuff so in California we don't use a lot of trust funds in real estate sales but in property management you will have a trust fund so that's why they want you to know about trust fund and trust fund accounting so the broker that you work for is the one that's responsible for the trust fund and you can't have your own separate trust fund whatever broker you work for will have a trust fund if they have property management so back in the day when we used to collect money for the deposit on the purchase we would get a check from them and believe it or not within three business days you had to get that check over to your broker and you had to put it in one of three places you had to put it in your broker's trust fund in escrow's trust fund or to the owner of the funds and the owner of the funds is a seller and that's actually a state exam question you know what do you do with the trust funds now in the real world we don't do that anymore when we get an offer what we do is when it's accepted we have our buyer wire the funds directly to escrow and escrow puts it into their trust fund and then you go through the transaction and at the end the funds come through from the buyer and everything goes to the seller but um, when you're doing property management, you have to have trust funds because first of all, you take a deposit from the renters and you give it to the owner. Now, sometimes the owner keeps it in the trust fund. So if it's in the trust fund, I don't know how you're supposed to balance it out. You're supposed to make a note of it and keep it to the side in the trust fund because it's not your money. And the most important reason why we have a trust fund is because if the broker gets sued, then your client's money is safe in the trust account because the trust account, anybody that's suing somebody knows that in a trust account, that's the client's money, not the broker's money. Got that? Now the broker is allowed to have, so I'm just giving you a review and then we'll see what the book has to say. Um, but the most a broker could ever have in the trust fund is $200. You need to know that $200. Look at I had my nails done. $200 and that $200 is for the maintenance of the trust fund okay it's not it's not for it's not his money it's money that's in there for the ma the maintenance of the trust fund okay so none of the broker's money can be in there except for you have to know this number two hundred dollars and that's maintenance of the account got it and any other money from the broker cannot be in the trust fund. Now, if a, if a broker is a property management company and he has rental properties, his own money, he cannot, you have to know this, it's on the state exam. If the broker has rentals and he collects a check from his clients and puts it into the trust fund, that's called commingling. The broker cannot put his own money into the trust fund from his renters. So he can't technically manage his own property with his property management company. So it makes sense because if his money was in there and the commingling happened, then maybe your client's money wouldn't be safe. So you got to follow the rules. Here we go. So what does it tell you to say? Well, one of the things, thank you for the thumbs up, you guys. You're awesome. That we may be small, but we're bold, right? So on the trust fund, I got to watch the time today. So this is just a short so we can get the trust fund part out of our way and move on to the next part in chapter four. So after reconciliation of the trust account, the client's liability should equal the trust account balance. So they have to equal, and it says, see on the, de you know, you can go to the DRE website and look about trust funds, but they're supposed, it's supposed to equal out every month. And they're gonna ask you how often does a broker have to reconcile his account? They reconcile it at usually at the end of the month, once a month. So questions I know about are how often, hello, hi Candy, how you doing? 
Glad to see you. I'm so glad. How do you get on every single time? I have people go, oh, I missed you. I missed you. And I'm like, well, Candy's there all the time. Right, Candy? So anyway, questions on the state exam and possibly in your final about the trust fund is how often do they have to reconcile it? It's every month. Um, can they put any of their own money into it? The only amount they can put in is $200 and that's for the maintenance of the account. Hello, Maria. And they can only... Um, like I said, only put their client's money in there and it has to balance out every month. So I notified via YouTube. Oh, you got my notification, so that's how you come on all the time. And while I'm trying to come on at times that will help you, I was thinking about doing it last time, but we went out to dinner and I had one glass of wine too many. I walked into my room and I, on the bed. Um, I guess I shouldn't have had wine. Uh, it just knocks my butt out. So, you know, that's what happens when you live a healthy lifestyle and then you do something that you're not used to doing. It just throws you off. I don't want to be thrown off. So I don't know what time I can come tomorrow because, let's see, I'm not sure if I have a morning meeting. Look, at I have my schedule right in front of me. Let's see what the morning looks like. What time do I have to be somewhere? Let's pull it up and see. Thursday morning, tomorrow morning, expert witness. I'm not doing that. Listen to these, these, these things that we can do. Risk management is at 8 a.m. And risk management is making sure that we do what's right at our brokerage and we don't get ourselves in trouble. So risk management tomorrow is from 8 a.m. to 11. Maybe I should just sneak in there at 10.30. Well, then I'm gonna miss too much. Maybe I'll go in and sneak out. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll notify you guys and let you know when I'm gonna be here. But anyway, let's stick to trust funds because I don't have a lot of time. So make sure you know everything I just said about trust funds because that's gonna be on your finals and it's gonna be on your state exam. So it says a broker accepting money a deposit is required to give it to the principal. Place it in the trust account or give it to the escrow company. So you have three places, the principal, the trust account, or the escrow company. Deposits other than for initial deposits, usually around $200, to start the account and never the personal property of the broker. Any money accepted should go within three business days into an independent bank trust account in the name of the broker or the trustee. So remember, a broker can keep up to $200 of their own personal funds in the trust account without being guilty of commingling. You have to know what commingling is, and commingling is mixing together the funds of the principal, your client, with the funds of the licensed broker. Commingling is illegal, and you will get busted if you do it. Um, now, you guys wouldn't be doing commingling until you're a broker, and maybe you start your own a company, and then you do property management, or you have a, a trust account. Commingling is illegal practice of mixing the client's money with the agent's private funds. By law, each entry in the broker's trust fund account must be identified. Trust fund shortages are the most common violation on DRE audits. And, you know, sometimes we have the DRE, the Department of Real Estate, here at the conferences and you're able to ask them questions. And I would love to ask them why they have so many old things on the state exam because it's just frustrating that you guys have to learn stuff that has nothing to do with what you're doing. And maybe they should have a separate property manager license and something about the trust fund accounts. But the trust fund accounting should all be test, honestly, on the broker's exam and not on your sales exam. So it is what it is. You just have to know it, and then that way when you get your broker's license, you can do it, all right? So an unlicensed employee of a broker who is authorized, this is a question I had on my state exam, but it's not anywhere in the cram courses, but I'm pretty sure it might pop up at you. And the question is, who else is authorized to take money out of the trust fund? I mean, because people think it's only the broker. That's not true. So an unlicensed employee of a broker who's authorized in writing can make withdrawals from the broker's trust account provided that employee is covered by a fidelity bond for at least the amount of the funds to which the employee has access to at any given time. So I would make sure you know that because a lot of times you get asked, you know, can somebody else take money out of the trust fund? Transaction files. Um, this is something that's not on your state exam that I know of, but what it's talking about right here really briefly is how long, and I think we already mentioned this in class, how long um, do you have to keep paperwork? How long do you have to keep your deposit slips and your purchase contracts and all that? It's three years, and it's three years from the time that you closed escrow. So you need to know that. So I'm keeping this with as much information as I can so that we can learn more and get closer to our real estate license, or if you're already licensed, learn more and be better at what you do. It says Uniform Electronic Transfer Act. Hmm. 
It says a real estate broker who obtains documents in any transaction for what the real estate broker's license is required when such documents contain electronic signatures. So electronic signatures is what we do pretty much all the time now. Um, the Uniform Electronic Transaction Act must retain a copy of such documents by causing a paper copy of the document to be made or by using electronic image storing in the media. Media, that's what it says. The broker may obtain copies of such documents at locations other than the broker's place of business. The DRE, the Department of Real Estate, requires brokers to utilize WORM. WORM is on your state exam, believe it or not. Not only is WORM on your state exam, but it might be on your finals. So um, write once, read many times is the storage system to share documents electronically. So know that when we use the zip form, so most real estate agents are gonna be using DocuSign or what we use called zip forms. Zip forms is freaking amazing and a lot of real estate agents <laughs> don't know they could use their zip form file for outside documents. So let's say that you have an outside document for a client that you wanna sign. What you do is you upload it into the zip forms. It says outside document, you bring it in and you can send it over to your client for signature, which is super awesome because it says, I did not, I took with real estate trainers. Oh, you didn't, are you saying, okay, so somebody just Instagram me because somebody said that um, they didn't pass the real estate test. And I said, did you take my exam prep? And they said, no, they took real estate trainers. So it just depends on which teacher they got. And I don't know, and I haven't asked her yet, but mine is not a word association for my exam prep. Mine is we are studying and tutoring you through a two day course to get you past the real estate exam. And so far, all my people are passing. We had like 12 people pass this week. So it's super exciting to see people pass and get their license. Unfortunately, it's really sad that a lot of them never do anything. I have one girl, she's a dynamite, she's a go-getter, but she just doesn't know how to go and get leads. And she was, she won't do what I tell her to do. So, you know, when I coach you and tell you to do something, I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink it. You know that, right? All right, let's go on and see what else we got. Salespeople may be independent contractors or employees. So for the most part, you guys are gonna be independent contractors. Uh, the CAR and all the real estate agents out here, we're constantly fighting to remain, uh, and it's gonna stay that way because we fought and we won. It's, it was already placed into law that we are independent contractors, and there's three things that you have to have when you're an independent contractor, and one of them is a license. So if you have your real estate license and you're acting as an independent person, you're an independent contractor. Now. Your broker will not pay for your medical and your broker will not pay for any type of 401k. And with that said, that's one of the things that I wanna bring on to California Real Estate Experts, our company, so that our licensed people have a way that we can have some type of 401k. Now, a lot of the bigger brokers talk about having a retirement for you, but when you leave their company, they don't let you take it with you. So if it's in the form of stocks, they might make you sell back the stocks. So be aware of stuff like that and ask about that when you're interviewing your brokers. But going on, so the smartest, one of the smartest things that you could do as a licensed agent is open up your own corporation. So have your own corporation and have your company pay you as a, corp, as a corporation, okay? So next thing, most real estate licensees are considered independent contractors under federal income tax law, but according to California real estate law and the real estate commissioner, they are considered employees of the broker. I think this book is wrong on that because we're not employees of the broker, okay? I know that for a fact. You'll never be an employee of the broker as a salesperson unless you work at an auction house or somewhere where they said, okay, we'll bring you on, on it as an employee because if they bring you on as an employee, it costs your broker two things that they don't wanna pay and that's Social Security and Medi-Cal. So they don't pay into that and you have to know that for the state exam. So that's wrong in this book. I hate when that happens, but, um, Oh well, right? So I'll remember page 94 has an error. Um, an unlicensed person, like a secretary, a bookkeeper, an unlicensed transaction coordinator, cannot give information regarding the real estate transaction on the phone or in any practice of real estate for compensation. So you can't compensate somebody who's not licensed to do something that they're not supposed to do and they're not licensed. And I know that on the state exam, you have a lot of questions about, you know, what can an unlicensed assistant do? Just remember, they can't do anything that you can do, which means explain a document or show a home, those kinds of things, okay? It goes on to say an unlicensed assistant who prepares an advertisement must have prior written approval by the employing broker. 
In most real estate offices, the salespeople are treated as independent contractors. They come and go as they want, so we don't have to be there for a specific time. And that's the other thing. As an independent contractor, they can't tell you, you have to be at this sales meeting or you have to be at this company meeting. So as an independent um, salesperson, it's up to you if you want to learn what they're offering you. And if you don't want to learn what you're, they're offering you, why are you with a brokerage that's expecting you to do that? Now, you can learn a lot of stuff from your local association. Your local association will have classes. But you guys, I'm teaching you everything you need to know because after I do this, we're going to be doing, I got my license, what do I do? We're doing that. You guys, we're doing, I got my license, what next? On Thursday at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. But that's a class that you guys got to pay for. I'm sorry. Do, do you have to pay my bills once in a while? So I think it's somewhere around 65, 70 bucks. And it tells you what you do when you get your license. So I got my license, what do I do? Also tells you how to interview your broker, which you guys should already be doing. If you're taking these classes, you should find a broker to work for, okay? And I would say work in the area that you live in. And if you wanna work in a different area, move to that different area, right? Anyway, so it says, it goes on to say, state income taxes, social security, unemployment insurance, and state disability, you don't get. The only thing that you get from your broker is workman's comp if you hurt yourself. More strictly supervised workers, such as secretaries, are generally considered employees. The broker is required, however, to carry workman's comp, I just told you that, and public liability insurance for salespeople in the same way that they do for employees. So on the state exam, the broker has to pay for workman's comp for employees and, um, and licensed people who are not employees that are independent contractors. The brokers, re oh, I already wrote that, read that. Licensees do not have to be um, displayed. Licenses do not have to be displayed, but must be kept in the employee's broker's office. So that's cool because that's really new. We used to have to have our licenses in a frame on the wall, right when you walk into the office and or in the library. The other place was a library lunch, with a lunchroom, okay? So in the entryway or the lunchroom. And that may still be on the state exam, but now we don't have to do that anymore. We can have their licenses in their file with their paperwork, okay? Written brokers associates contracts. So when you sign up at a real estate office, you have to sign a contract, okay? You're gonna have a contract between you and the broker. As required by real estate commissioner regulations, brokers must have a written contract with each of their licensed members of their sales staff. The employment contract shall cover all material aspects of the relationship between the parties, including supervision of the licensed activities, duties, and compensation. So your compensation is in your contract. A copy of this contract must be retained by all parties for three years from the date of termination. Got that? three years from the date of termination. This is also required for sales people who are themselves brokers, but are working under another broker's license. Those are called broker associates. So when a broker's under another broker's license, they're not the broker of record. You have to understand that. You don't work under them, you work under your broker of record. And then any other person who gets their broker license, they're called broker associates. And I don't understand why a broker associate would stay under another broker because you're just giving Part of your commission to them they might do it because of name recognition but once you've been working in the business for a while and your clients are referring to you your clients will refer to you they're not going to refer they might say sharon with california real estate they called me right in the middle of our video but what time is it because i gotta run you guys i got through a couple of pages which is great i will let you know when i'm going to be back on again i will try to get on sometime tomorrow and get you updated on some more stuff because we want to get into chapter five. There's always about 15 chapters in these books. And if you have any questions, please text me or put it in the comments. I love helping you and I look forward to being back live and I'll see you soon.